the most fun I've had this exploration. See, I told you you just needed a bit of action in your life. <gasps> All right, just one more sample from the surface. Done. All right, let's head back to the ship so we can... Wait, do you hear that? Guys? Wicked! <gasps> I could have snapped my neck! What the hell were you two doing? Actually having fun instead of wasting time for boredom. <sighs> we should probably go back. Well, that's what we were gonna do anyways. Oh, thank God. What are the odds that we were able to find such a lovely heart-shaped feature on Pluto? Yeah, it's truly a sight to behold. All I see is a certain underrated Friday Night Funkin' mod. Oh crap, I almost forgot. Hello everyone! So, we've reached the final place in the solar system for our exploration. And we finished our mission, so now it's time to return. But before I do so, I need to go back out so I can get the facts done. Excuse me, but PJ, how do you keep coming in and out of the ship every time you use that camera? I haven't thought of that either. GET HIM! Ah! Okay, I got out. Now, this will be the last time I will be doing this, concluding the journey of the solar system once and for all, once all of the remaining celestial objects on this list I have, have all introduced themselves. I don't know how much battery life this camera has, but I promise I'll do my best to keep everything up. And without any further ado, let's begin! Now we're in the further regions of our solar system, which is where two of the last planets in our solar system are found. Let's see what they have installed for us. Excuse me, you two, but may you two introduce yourselves and explain who you guys are? Uh, oh, absolutely. My name's Uranus. And I'm Neptune. We're the furthest planets from the sun and the coldest in the solar system. My distance from the sun is 1.8 billion miles, and my orbit lasts 84 Earth years. Meanwhile, I'm over 2.8 billion miles from the sun, and take 165 years from my single revolution around the sun. Both of us contain colder and denser gases, including methane, which gives us a bright blue color. Besides the methane and ammonia in our atmospheres, we also have faint dark rings and a fair share of dozen moons. But this is pretty much where the similarities end. Unlike Neptune, I have an extreme axial tilt. It's around 98 degrees, which basically means I'm rolling on my side. How this happened? Yeah, I'd rather not get into that right now. And as for me, what sets me apart from him is my weather, as I have very fast and violent storms, with wind speeds of around 1300 miles per hour faster than the speed of sound. I was named after the Greek god of the sky, not you know what. And I'm named after the god of the sea. Both of these names are given probably due to our blue color. Now before we go, let's briefly introduce our moons, specifically our major ones. Let's start with mine. My name's Miranda, and I'm the smallest major Uranian moon. I have huge cliffs and valleys which give me my jagged appearance. My name's Ariel and I'm Uranus' brightest moon. I have bright and long valleys with tons of craters on my young surface. Hi, I'm Umbriel, the darkest moon of Uranus. Like my sister Ariel, I'm full of craters, but have an older surface. And this white crater on my equator. My name is Titania, and I'm Uranus' largest moon. Although at only 1,578 kilometers, I'm not as large or visually appealing as the other largest moons, since we Uranian moons do fairly look the same due to our neutral and blue color surfaces. And I'm Oberon, 
the furthest and reddest of the majors. This is due to micro-impacts on the outer Uranian moons being pulled in by Uranus's gravity and showered onto us, giving us our reddish hue. All five of us have subsurface oceans under a crust of ice and rock, and we are named after the characters by William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. My name is Triton. Neptune only arrived in the command. I too have a subsurface ocean, a thin atmosphere, and quite a volcano. The rest of Neptune's moons are nothing more than fragments from the past and captured asteroids. It's likely that instead of forming with Neptune, I once was a dwarf planet that was snared by her gravity in the past, and that's also why I'm the only major moon with a retrograde orbit. Now that we've finished the ice giants, let us further progress into the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a very cold and dark donut-shaped region around the Sun beyond the orbit of Neptune. Like the Asteroid Belt, it is also composed of thousands and thousands of smaller objects, asteroids included. However, it is also composed of comets, which gain long and beautiful tails of ion gas and visible dust upon them getting closer to the Sun, with varying orbits that can lead them into a permanent orbit or sometimes on a collision course with some objects. But our main focus here are the dwarf planets. A dwarf planet is a type of small solar system body that only meet two of the criteria that normal planets follow. The only difference is that they cannot clear their orbits due to their small size, and as a bonus rule, they cannot be a moon of a planet. The International Astronomical Union IAU, were the people that conducted these rules, which also led to the unfortunate demotion of a particularly well-known Kuiper Belt object. Um, hey. Hello, Pluto. So, can you explain facts about yourself and who you really are? Um, sure. My name's Pluto, and I'm, well, the former ninth planet. Due to the IAU's definitions of a planet, I was demoted to being a dwarf planet, as I don't have enough gravity to clear my orbit. But despite that, I'm the largest and brightest dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt being around half the size of the United States. I'm even smaller than Earth's moon. My surface is cold and barren, with chemicals called tholins on the dark regions. Furthermore, I have an orbit around the sun that not only takes 248 Earth years in total, but also takes me closer to the sun for about 20 years in total, which causes my atmosphere of mainly nitrogen and methane and carbon monoxide to freeze and thaw like snow. I also have a surface composed of frozen gases, and also has cryovolcanoes too, hinting of a subsurface ocean within me. I also have five moons of my own, my largest being my little brother, Jared. Oh hey, I'm Kieran, and I'm Pluto's largest moon. The rest are called Dix, Dex, Kerberos, and Hydra, and which have inconditioned daylight due to me and Pluto's gravitational influence. As both me and Pluto are pretty big in terms of a moon being compared to his parent, this also makes us what is known as a double planet. Me and Pluto are also tidally rock, which means we only have one side facing each other. I'm also well known for my heart-shaped location known as the Tombo Regio, named after my discoverer, who founded me in 1930. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Goodbye. Alright, now that Pluto is done, let's try to find the other dwarf planets. Oh, hello. What's up? Hello, you two. Do you think you two can introduce yourself? You look pretty interesting. Oh, sure. I'll come up first. Okay, honey? Okay, babe. So my name is Haumea, and I am the third largest and third brightest dwarf planet. I'm also well known for my egg-like shape as a result of my four-hour rotation. I'm also the first object in the Kuiper Belt to be discovered with my own rings. I also have a slightly darkish stain in my surface. I also have two moons and an orbit shared with other objects, all of May, which have been in a result of an impact long ago, giving me these strange features. 
Me and my moons were originally named Santa, me, Rudolph, Hayaka, and Blitzton, Namaka, due to our discovery date being close to Christmas. But this was changed to me being named after the goddess of fertility of Hawaii, with my moons being named after two of her daughters. Okay, man, my turn. I'm Make Make, named after the Rapa Nui god of fertility and nicknamed the Easter Bunny due to my discovery day being very close to Easter. A lot of people knew me as a reddish brown color, but in reality, I'm actually a very bright color, a creamy white. It's mainly due to my icy surface, composed of methane and ethane. I don't have an atmosphere, but I do have a one small dark moon, discovered a decade after my discovery due to how bright I was. Like Pluto, I also have crowd volcanoes, and along with Haumea, we have an orbit at around 28 and 29 degrees. <laughs> well, that's about it from us. Bye, dudes. Sup, man. Hey, Eris. So, do you want to explain about yourself? Yeah, I'm down for facts about myself. Feel free, man. Nice. I'm Eris, the second largest dwarf planet and most massive. I'm named after the goddess of discord and chaos, and formerly was given the name Xenna. Back then, I was originally thought to be the 10th planet, as Pluto was still a planet back then. But that was never my goal due to the demotion incident, which was partially my fault since I and some others being the reasons for his demotion. But don't worry, we get along with him. Anyways, I'm mainly composed of frozen methane and nitrogen ice, which gives me both my white and shiny appearance. I also have one moon with me, Dysnomia. Many of us Kuiper Belt objects also exist as binary companions like Pluto and Charon, due to our relative sizes. Anyways, I'm gonna go for now. Bye, y'all. Well, now that she has introduced herself, let's move on to the next one. What about two? Oh, hello you two. Now then. Will you guys explain yourselves? My name's Verona. And I'm Ixian. We're small and icy dwarf plants. I was named after the father of the centaurs. I'm named after the Hindu sea god. I'm also known as a Platina, meaning me and Pluto share a two to three resonance with Neptune as we orbit the sun. Neither of us have moons, but we do have bolins, which is a certain chemical out here that gives objects a reddish brown color. I'm also egg-shaped like Hermia due to my six-hour rotation, possibly due to past impacts. Well, that's about it from us. Bye! Alright, what's next? Oh hey, mind if I go next real quick? Sure, go right ahead. Thanks, my name's Salacia, named after the wife of Neptune in mythology, and my moon Ectea being named after a sea deity. I was discovered in 2004 by three people, one of which is Michael Brown, who was known for spotting many dwarf planets like us. My albedo is also pretty dark, and I'm also about the size of the dwarf planet Cirrus. So that's all I have to say. Bye! Let me have a try, dude. So, my name is Orcus. I and I am a cousin of Pluto, as we both have similar names in mythology. The gods of the underworld, Pluto's being Roman and mine's being Etruscan. Like Pluto, I have a binary companion. His name is Vance, and he's also a moon. And my orbit is also kind of like a mirror to Pluto's orbit, resulting in my closest to the sun and Pluto's furthest, and vice versa. And making me nicknamed the Anti Pluto. Although I discovered back in 2004, I later obtained images from a sky survey showed images of me back in 1951, apparently. I'm also icy, with a neutral bright gray surface, not like the browns and reds to some objects in the belt. Anyways, that's all I have to say now. Bye. Okay, so where to next? Wait, I have a list, right? Let's see. Alright, I think the next one should be around here somewhere. Psst, what's up, man? Jesus! What, dude? Y your rings! They're, they're huge! Oh yeah, about that. Ugh. Can I tell some stuff about myself as well? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. So, hi, I'm Qualar, and I'm brownish. I have a moon named Waywat, and I'm named after the deity of the indigenous Tongva people of Southern California. Oh yeah, I'm also a blade as well. Uh, what about, you know... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, my, my rings. I have two rings outside of my roach limit, an area around any celestial body or any object can be torn apart and turned into rings. 
like the ones around Saturn. But mine aren't in this limit, which makes this an anomaly. Along with Haumea's rings, mine were found in a stellar occultation. I'm also known as a Cubano, which means I'm not affected by Neptune's gravity. Anyways, that's all I have to say, so bye. Oh, hey, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, me? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm Gung Gung, formerly 2007-OR-10 and Snow White, which made me at the time the largest dwarf planet without an official name, until I was given the name Gung Gung after the destructive water god in Chinese mythology, with my small moon Chang Lu named after the nine-headed serpent minister of Gung Gung. In fact, I would say this name is a lot better than Snow White, as in true color, I am actually brown. Along with Eris, me and her are in the scattered disk, which is where objects thrown out by Neptune in the past are located and orbit the sun. I am the fifth largest dwarf planet, and I'm around 1,230 kilometers, and I might even once had cryovolcanoes in my past. And I also have a thin, tenuous atmosphere of my own as well. Okay, I think that's all I have to say. Bye! Okay, one more, and I'm so done with all of this. Uh, hey, you, would you like to explain facts about yourself real quick? I'm trying to wrap this up as fast as I can. Oh, um, yeah, sure, I can try my best. My name's Senna, and I'm a large minor planet with an orbit that takes me, oh dear, about 84 billion miles from the sun, which is why I get so lost easily. <laughs> I was named after the Inuit goddess of the sea, and I live within the Auric Cloud. Regions where comets are mostly found and some objects called Sentinels like me would be found. The category being named after me, of course. I'm also similar in color to Mars, and I have no moons either, which also means it's not fully understood what my mass is. My radius is somewhere around 1,000 kilometers. My orbit's strange shape is not fully understood, but it might be possible it could be due to the gravity from nearby stars. Or I could be captured. But I don't really know myself, so I think I'm just gonna go. See ya! Finally, I am so exhausted right now. Okay, I'm back. Let's go home now. I'm ready to end this. I'm well, you guys ready to go home? Yep. Yep. Yes. Alright then, let's go. Yo, PJ, you good? I'm exhausted and so burnt out. I had to film like 10 or more objects for facts and it took me too long to get back inside. I just really need to take a nap. Well, night man. Now, this would conclude our journey for the solar system in person. However, it would not be as a whole, at least in my case. As what you probably may not know, is that our solar system was thought to have more than eight planets, not including Pluto. Worlds you may have never heard of before.